Today on Stamp TV, I'm going to show you a great way to make a useful little stocking stuffer that everyone will love. Just about everyone can use refrigerator magnets to keep all of those calendars, appointment slips, and other important information right at their fingertips. And personalizing them with a photograph will make any magnet the perfect stocking stuffer for grandparents, aunts and uncles, and more. Let me show you the tools and products you're going to need to do this project. First, you're going to need some dies, and I am using the Label 16 die set. I'm using one of the larger, the large frame. And then I have both the standard small and large circles. And I'm using one of the stamps from the new Wishing You Joy Stamp TV kit, and this is the big large frame that coordinates with the Label 16 die. You're also going to need some ink. And I would coordinate your ink based on what color you think uh, the person would prefer for their kitchen. Now my kitchen is done in lots of cranberries and warm tones, greens and browns, so I'm going to use some of the Memento rhubarb stock. You're also going to need some adhesive. You're going to need some score tape and some cardstock, and I'm using the Gina K Designs Pure Luxury Ivory cardstock, and this happens to be the layering weight. You can use the heavy base weight if you'd like to, but the layering weight, because you're going to have several layers together, the layering, the layering weight will be plenty thick enough. Then you're going to need some magnets, and I'm using the Basic Gray Large Magnets. Now, they have plus ones and minus ones, the positive and negative, but I want to show you something interesting. Here I have a cookie sheet that is, of course, magnetic because any magnet will stick to it, um, and both the, pl the positive and the negative ones will both work. It's just when you're working with them together that you need to know which side is positive and which side is negative. But because you're only going to use these on one side of the project, you can mix them and use either one of them for the project. Okay, so to begin, I'm going to start off by inking up this big background stamp, and I'm going to do that using some of the rhubarb stock ink. And I like to use a big block for this one, and I like to keep it sitting on its back like this. And I'll show you how I ink it up to get good coverage. What I'm going to do is I'm going to just place my piece of ivory cardstock gently right on top. And then I'm going to rub with my finger all over the surface of the stamp. This way I know every part of the stamp is touching my paper. Sometimes when you flip it around and doing, do it the other way, you get some shallow spots. But this way you know you're going to get it completely covered. Okay, and there is my stamped image. Now my next step is to cut out the inside circle of this particular frame. So I'm going to do that using the cuddle bug. And I'm going to start with my A plate and then my B plate. And now I'm going to use one of the circles here. And I want to make sure that if you can see, there is just a tiny little bit of that rhubarb that goes on the outside of that circle. And that's how you know you have it pretty centered. Okay, so that looks very centered to me. Let me show you that a little bit closer. You can see that that looks pretty centered. And now I'm going to use my C-plate on top and gently press down and run that through the machine. Now if I did get that centered, there's going to be a little tiny bit of ivory showing, which is really kind of nice. Let's see. There we go. So you can see there's just a little bit of ivory showing. Okay, so now my next step is to cut out this photograph. And you know how when you get your school pictures back in the beginning of the year, you have the big ones and you give a big one to grandma and a big one to the other grandma and you keep a big one for yourself. And then you have a few wallets that you give away, but you always have lots of extra wallets. Well, this is a great way to use some of those up by making these little tiny refrigerator magnets. So here's Alicia's school picture from this year and I'm going to cut that out using the next size bigger. You can see this is the one I cut the frame out with and this is the one I'm going to use to cut Alicia's photo out with. So it's going to be just a little bit bigger. All right. And now I have 
Alicia's photo. Okay, my final cut that I have to make is two more of these frames, but I don't have to worry so much about centering anything because these are just going to be plain ivory. Just have to make sure that the frame is actually in the center of the cardstock and nothing's hanging off the edge. So there's one, and here is another one. go. Now I have my frame and my two background panels all cut out. I'm ready to start assembling and I'm going to do that by first applying the picture to one of the blank frames. I'm going to make sure that I have that photo centered and as long as it looks pretty centered it'll be just fine and the reason why it will be fine is because you know that we chose a circle to cut the photo out bigger than the circle that we cut the center of the frame out with. So as long as that's pretty centered, we'll be just fine. So there we go. Now check it first. I'm gonna stick this one on top. There, that looks really nice. So now I'm going to assemble these together. Put a little bit of dot adhesive on each of the little points jutting out. And then I like to hold them up and really kind of play with them while I'm putting them together to make sure that they're really nice and straight. There we go. Before I really squeeze all that tape down. There, okay. So now there is the mat and on the back is empty. Now I'm gonna put my magnets on. And you'll notice that when you pick up these basic gray magnets, they have this little sticker piece on it. You just peel this off and that makes the sticker. Now you certainly will get enough stick with just one magnet, but if you're like me and you like to put lots of calendars and appointment slips and everything up on your refrigerator, then I would use two magnets just to make it a little bit tougher. So I'm gonna put one there and I'm going to put one right under it. Now since you, you can use both the positives and the negatives, it really is like doing one project. You're using two magnets for one project just like you would be if you were doing a two-piece project where you needed them both. So I'm going to put the other one there. I like them right in the center. Now I'm going to use a little bit of score tape because you really want the back panel to stay tight. So I'll put a little piece of score tape. Nothing can get score tape to come apart once it's together. I'm gonna to do that at each one of these small points. And then for the little corners, I'm just going to add a little bit of mono adhesive here just to hold that together. There we go. Now I'm going to take off the little strips here and I'm all ready to glue these panels together. And again, I'm going to do it the same way. I'm going to kind of feel to make sure that everything is really, really even before I really press down hard. And then press all of that tape, all that score tape into place. Okay, here's my cookie sheet, and you can see how great that sticks right onto the cookie sheet. Isn't that fun? Now, if you want to jazz it up even a little bit more, you certainly could take a little bit of glitter pen and add some glitter around the frame and maybe in between the line and the frame if you want to make it a little bit more sparkly or you can keep it looking just soft and quaint just like that. Another great option is to use stamps with encouraging sayings to make refrigerator magnets for friends, teachers, and co-workers. And don't forget to make a set for yourself too.